video number two. So we're going to jump into the value in this video for the. So let's jump in. Um, the first thing we lead out with is on what is called a parent intake form. So this is kind of the questions that we go over in order to kind of um, get us an idea or synopsis, kind of like a doctor when you have an intake form, they'll kind of fill out, um, you know, how you're feeling and that kind of stuff there. So before we jump into the questions here, I'm going to walk you through what we present to them as far as the value up front. Um, and so the value is in what we call our college planning booklet. So you're going to have access to this and this college planning booklet. Um, and in, it's going to be where you can have it in PDF, you can print it out, make it as your master booklet. And then I use this in my, um, in my spiel in order to get them to allow me in the home for the second. And so we're going to close this out up two of them so so we give them pretty much still harvesting I'm out there Yale Stanford so it's like the top 100 endowment funds in the United States so they get that as part of the um, um, they can go through get data let me try to navigate through this about college admission booklet because it's kind of like a roadmap so the aptitude ACT test for that, AT, how to prepare for that, um, job notification survey, so five uh, step activity to help you think about what you, what you really want to do when you grow up. You know you got the 15 minute assessment test, but this is just another uh, exercise they can do in the booklet that we're going to bring back to them. Uh, job security. Um, all these are just different things that they can kind of fill out on their own and create a score and then they can rank the major and stuff like that so one of the things that we're doing now and I don't know if this is part of it this is it so under the networking and I'll talk about it real quick but under the networking we're starting to have the students to learn at the eighth grade year, their eighth grade year how to start their network so let's say for example my daughter wants to be in digital media and so I've already had her go out to a digital media company here in town uh, called Lillian James. And she sat down with her little dress on, her little necklace and all that, earrings. And we sat down with them in their conference room. Uh, she introduced herself to them. They told them her about their company and talked about internships possibly in the future because she's only 14 going into her freshman year this year. And, um, and so she got their card. She put it in her phone. And now every quarter... We're for anything but just building the relationship you get about 15 to 20 different companies do that graduates from college so when she graduates she's built a network of people that can possibly hire her when she comes out of uh, college so that's stuff that families are not really uh, teaching their kids I really feel the schools are not doing that at all and so we're trying to help with that piece things if a student doesn't know how to get in front um, of uh, Lillian James, they can go through and follow our system, which is called Interview a Professional. So what they'll do is they'll come down here and they'll just cold call a company that's in their uh, career path and say, "Hey, I go to such and such high school, and what I wanted to do is see if I can interview somebody that's already in um, the legal field or accounting field or whatever, and um, because I'm trying to uh, to do a survey." And if you don't mind, if there's a way I can call you back in the next week or so, conduct an uh, interview with you over the phone, and maybe uh, email you kind of periodically how I'm doing, if you don't mind me doing that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everybody wants to be an expert. So then they go through, put in the name of the person, phone number, occupation, company, ask them these questions. How long have you been in the field? Um, why did you decide to work in the field? Yada, yada, yada. You get the gist of it. So that's just a piece of what's all in this booklet. All right, I'm not going to beat that down, but it walks you through the campus visits when you do your college tours and all that stuff. So it's a very, very comprehensive booklet, and a lot of the families love it. And you're going to bring this back in your second appointment, and that's one of the main reasons why they're very interested in you coming back and talking to, to them about everything else that you do. So that's the first part. So the second part of what we do, so I'll minimize this. The second part of what we do before we go through the questionnaire is we hit them with this. And so this here letters so we talk about college leverage 
and all the whole program. And so you meet with them, you first start out talking about the booklet, you go into college leveraging, then you're going to go into Sage, and then you're going to go into the software, right? And then from that point, you'll segue into the questionnaire. By this point, you've enamored them and hit them with so much information that they haven't heard. They're just answering questions as you go through converting them over into the financial services side. So this here is one of the, the students that uh, we have on a national level. So they actually got an award letter. This was kind of what that award letter looks like. It was $56,000 to go down to this college a year. Uh, parents contribu student contribution was 2000 out of six. Parents contribution was 47000 which you know that all came out the parents' pocket. So out of the 56000 they had to come up with 50000 They only got $6,000 in scholarships that came from the university, which was a general scholarship, which is endowment money, and then work study. So we taught them how to use the appeal letter, which is in the software, and then they also were taught how to use award letters from other schools. They sent all that into this university, and this university came back and took that $6,000 scholarship to, drum roll please, it took that $6,000 scholarship to a $34,000 scholarship, right? So the family initially was going to have to pay 50. Their contribution amount went down from 50,000 down to 22. And so that's what we do. We create value. I'm not guaranteeing this is going to happen in every situation, but if you don't appeal or don't even try to appeal this, I can guarantee you it's not going to happen. So this is what we explained, and I explained it that exact same way. So I suggest you do the same thing. When you sit down with these families, show them the booklet. We'll show you in the training, in the seven-day training, how to hit the high points of the booklet. You don't need to know everything in the booklet, but how to hit the high points of the booklet to move forward through your interview questions, right? So that's the two things we start out with in the beginning. We transition over into Sage. I've already done that for you in video one when I talked about the student portion. So that's when I engage the student into the conversation. So I'm kind of talking about the student and the parent portion up front talking about the college leveraging again with the student and parent up front then I move more towards the student which normally people try to move into a sales pitch but I'm going into the software and I'm going to to sage and then the software and then from that point I say hey uh, I don't know if you're going to qualify for the program but what I want to do which is called takeaway selling but what I want to do is ask you some questions to see kind of how you fit in regards to me making a recommendation for you being in the program right your recommendation is sending their information up to us so from that point you go in, you say, hey, what are your major concerns when it comes to college planning? You write down what they say. Make sure you put their name at the top, too. Um, how do you plan on paying for college? Do you have any systems in place to maximize scholarship opportunities? You're asking these questions because no, most of the time they don't, and this is just, easy, it's just deepening um, in their mind that they need help, and, so, and you're the solution, right? Um, how old will you be when their, your last child graduates from college? That is the financial transition question because now you're getting them to think about college and retirement. And so for me, I have an eight-year-old daughter. I'm 44. She will be out of the house probably in about nine years. So that pushes me to, well, I said college, plus another five years possibly of college. So that's 14. Uh, I will be 58. And so if you're taking money out of 401k accounts to send your kids to college and you're going to be 58, you only have basically about seven years between the time she graduates from college and the time that I can retire. So I really got to think about that uh, before I go pull it from those resources. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. So let me move forward into the next set of questions. So the next set, and if I can get this thing to navigate down for me. I think it finally caught up. I apologize. I got like 15 windows going on at the same time. So sometime even a good old Mac will take his time moving around. So I am going to continue to try to pull this down. And that's the only thing about when you're doing recordings. Um, you're at the mercy of the computer. So I see my cursor's down there. So I think I'm ready now. All right. So you can go down. Here we go. Here. And I think I went too fast. There we go. So you go down here to page two, and you get more information about the name of the students, their birthdays, because that's how you're going to get the birthday points awarded to them. Um, GPA, uh, class ranking, top five colleges, major, um, all that good stuff, right? And so you go through all that, 
and then you ask them these questions. Well, do you know how much money you're going to need to retire? Now, what you want to do at this point when you're asking these questions is you want to submit in their mind that you're an expert when it comes to talking about retirement and financial planning or financial services. So they'll say a million dollars. Yeah, okay, okay. And so I explain to them, you know, a million dollars may be great, but it's not how much money you have saved. It's how much money you're going to need to have in cash flow. We'll go through that through the seven-day training. But how much you'll need to have in cash flow that will, de will determine if you have enough money saved up. So we go through that. Then the, uh, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Um, so take 2 times 3 times 10 times 7 times 52 times 20. And so they, they try to ask them if they know that number. So they bring their cell phones out. They get, it's a fun game. They get to calculating it out. The number is 436,800 for number second. And so I tell them that's how much money it will cost you to eat um, food in retirement. That's two meals a day. Uh, two, that's two people eating three meals a day. Average meal is $10 a meal, seven days a week, 52 weeks for 20 years in retirement. That's how much money they're going to spend just on food. They're like, whoa, man, I didn't know that. Great. You know the rule of 72? No. That's how much time it takes money to double. So if I have an 8% return on my investment, 8 divided into 72, it'll take my money 9 years to double. If I have a 9% return on my money, divide that into 72, it'll take my money 8 years to double. They're like, oh, wow, okay, great. Again, we go through that through the 7-day training. Qualified versus non-qualified money. Do you know what that is? Qualified money is money that you actually have coming out of your check, going straight over into your 401k. You haven't paid taxes on it yet. It's going to be taxed in the future. Non-qualified money is normally money that comes out of your check post-tax that can go into investments like Roth IRAs, life insurance, what have you. And there's different ways that you're actually, um, your money is looked upon when you move that money out as far as distribution from qualified to non-qualified. So I kind of break that down. All I'm trying to do is set the stage that they need to really look at other options that may be on the table that they haven't considered. Then I go into the three-leg retirement stool. Do you know what the three-leg retirement stool is? They're like, oh, no. All right, well, you're supposed to retire with three income streams. One is Social Security. Second is a pension. If you don't have one, you can actually create one through different products. Third is personal savings, which could be a 401k, CDs, money market accounts, what have you. That third leg is your fun leg. That's the leg you travel, enjoy grandkids, what have you. Social Security and pension, be it that your company has one or you create one, or your guaranteed income uh, sources that cover your guaranteed expenses. So we break that portion down for them. Then I transition. Um, I say, okay, well, what I want to do is get some information from you because there may be some things that you're doing um, that could help your child when it comes to college planning, but there may be some things that you're doing that can actually hinder them when it comes to uh, financial, your finances or uh, applying for um, your fast food money and you know trying to get the scholarships and things of that sort. So I want to go through some questions with you so I can get a picture of where you are. And if I see some things that I can help you with, when I come back, I can make some suggestions to you that could possibly help you out um, as you make your plans for preparing for college and retirement. Is that okay? Great. What's your adjusted gross income? Husband, wife, how many exemptions? Date of birth. You need that for life insurance. That's why I'm asking for it. Do you have life insurance? If they have one that's on the job, great. Get that information from them. Ask them if they have, and I'll go through this in a seven-day training. Ask them if they have uh, a, the table. Um, or do they know what the table increase is on the group insurance plan? A lot of times they don't know that. We'll go through that in seven-day training. Uh, are they putting money into their 401k? If so, what are they contributing? What are they getting matched? Because I'm trying to see if they're overfunding that. And then also, do they have a 401k with another company that they haven't rolled over to this company? Or do they have a 401k that's just sitting somewhere else or money that's in some other account that they really don't know what's going on with it and they would like to get more information about how to better manage that money? So I'm asking that question because I'm trying to find orphan money by that question. Do you have a college savings plan? Great. Um, and then also, you know, if you don't have one or if you have one, are you funding that account right now? And if you're not funding it or if you don't have one, what could you commit to funding towards a college savings plan? Now I'm looking for a financial commitment from them in regards to how much money they can invest into a college savings plan based upon how much they have left over right now in their current life situation. So by getting that data, I am ready to rock and roll and get ready to move into that second appointment. So I'll set that second appointment up with them when they actually have the ability to um, have me come out and I'm telling them, hey, great, I appreciate you getting all this information. I'm going to go back to the office. 
work on getting everything set up. We're going to get the $1,000 scholarship set up as long as they're a junior to a newborn. We're going to also make sure we get their access code set up to get into the software. We'll have a college planning booklet uh, prepared for you when I come back. And then I'll look at what's going on with you financially and see if there's any suggestions that I can make that can help you take yourself to the next level in regards to preparing for your college, or your, your children's college and retirement. Hopefully that makes sense. That's a preview of what we do in that first appointment. If you move over into the seven day trial, we'll show you how to transition to the second appointment and how to make that happen and how we go through the referral process. Um, and quickly, I'll tell you, um, when they go through the referral process, they will get a thousand dollars. But if they have five people that um, they know that have children that will benefit from a thousand dollar scholarship or benefit from being in the, um, scholar the scholarship um, software program or the Sage thousand dollar scholarship, if they have somebody that they think would benefit from having that, for every um, five people that they give us, we can give them um, a two thousand dollar additional scholarship. I tell them it's we can give so if they have four people, you know, we'll give them that two thousand dollar scholarship. But I really heavily say, hey, if you got five people in your phone or five family members that you believe that would or friends that would benefit from that, we have to have that now in this appointment because when I turn all this over to Sage to get you set up, they want to have those referrals when we initially set the account up. So do you have any other people in the family? We give you five hundred for every person that you give us up to five people and that's um, up to up to two thousand for five people. So I kind of go through that to explain that to them. Hopefully I didn't get bumbled in saying that to you. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, but I, again I just straight face tell them hey Sage will give you five hundred dollars for each person that you refer to us up to two thousand um, dollars. If you have five people please um, let me get their name, email address, or name and phone number so I can get in contact with them even if they don't meet with me, even if they don't want to be involved in the program you guys still get that extra money by being in the program so I just want to explain that to them and then I set the appointment up hopefully for the same time the next week um, and then I'm coming back with all the information that I told them I was going to give them so that's what we do this is how we get in front of the families for that second appointment um, and then from that point we move forward now I did not say this and I'm sorry I got so much I'm trying to say in the preview but when we actually initially set this up um, if you have five to ten people that you know that have kids, what we do is we actually start the, the you out in the seven days, and we'll go through that on the other side, but I do want to kind of point this out because you're like, okay, well, how do I even get in front of these people to start out during the seven day? So a lot of times if you go to work for a group, they're telling you to put a, a list together of 100 people or 50 people or 40, whatever that is. All we need is five to ten, preferably ten, but five will work. Um, so basically from that point, you're going to say, hey, you know, I'm involved in the scholarship program. It guarantees, you know, as long as you uh, meet the criteria, a $1,000 scholarship when you start and $1,000 of their uh, every year of their birthday. And then the software is amazing. It does so much stuff. It does ACT tracking, college research, uh, has text message reminders. It shows you how to find scholarships, how to write essays, all that stuff, right? And so if you don't mind, I just want to see if I can maybe bring out the information to you kind of walk you through how the program works, show you this college planning booklet that they have um, about how to do some networking. And, um, and then if you're interested, great. If not, that's cool too. And so you kind of use that as a soft approach to get in front of people that you know, go through what I just went through. And from that point, when you walk out, on average, I will walk out with five to 10 or more referrals per house by using the SAGE approach saying that they're going to get a thousand dollars and another five hundred for every name up to five people um, being able to get three thousand dollars of scholarships and they would get their cell phones out and they would get to here the call such and such call such and such call they all forgot about such and such and I would fill that sheet up so that's how I was consistently this is how I've been working towards consistently getting the referrals from the program I'm moving into a lot more up market now because of my licenses and things of that sort but I still, I just had a family that just came out of here this Saturday. Um, it was two families that came into the program. And I actually, real quick, I, I meant to do that, so I'm glad I'm rambling. I want to show you something real quick. Um, this here is one of the families that came in here on Saturday. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot past. So he, he's, I sent him everything by, via email. 
he filled it out. So he'll be 55 years old by the time his last child graduates from college. I'm going to shoot past real quick the names. All right. And let me go here. So they are in, in Kansas. They filled out 436800 They He put in there how long would it take investment to double. And um, so then here he makes uh, 275000 a year. His wife makes sixty. They have two claim. There's the birthdays, but you don't know their names, so that didn't matter. Um, and they have a million dollar life insurance policy. He has 270000 in his 401k. He contributes 18000 a year um, into his 401k. And he has $25,000 in his college savings account. And when I asked him how much money he can start saving, he can save $12,000 a year towards college savings. This is a real deal, you guys. I'm not sitting here just telling you something that, um, that could work. It, it works, man. I'm not playing. So, um, and the crazy thing about it is, and I, and I, I always say I want to cut off, but I got so much in me that I want to give. So let me give this to you. Um, and if you can take this, and you may not even do the seven-day trial, but this is just uh, an approach that, that I use. When I have a person that makes that kind of income, when they're making 200 and what is that income for the family? That is about 300 and give or take 30, 340 thousand dollars a year. High income family, you can, they can't put money into a Roth IRA. It's just not happening. They're over the limit. So what you can do in that situation is find out, which I did from him on Saturday. I asked him, um, "Do you have after tax 401k?" He said, "I don't know." So you need to know. And he said, "Why?" I said, "Well, if you have an after tax 401k and they offer and they allow you to do an in-service distribution." You can take that money from the 401k and put it into, uh, you can backdoor Roth IRA. You can do an in-service distribution, put the money into the 401k after tax, um, put it into um, the after tax 401k, backdoor into a Roth IRA with the in-service distribution, and then that money that's actually in there, you can take the cost basis out without um, dealing with the um, situation with the, um, you can, because you already paid taxes on it, so you can take the cost basis out leave the growth in there for retirement but that money that's in that after tax 401k does not have to get listed on the FAFSA form when you can when you try to get apply for um, your financial aid money that's in that 529 plan is 25,000 you got to list it on the FAFSA form but if you backdoor a Roth IRA you can actually um, still use that money for college but also avoid the uh, asset protection allowance when you're preparing for um, your financial aid. So there's more tips and tricks that we'll talk about uh, with when you become a member because this stuff is ongoing. But I did want to point that out that there is this stuff is real. So I'm done. Uh, I, I did go over longer than what I wanted to, but I am grateful that you guys are investing the time. Hopefully, my last video when I talk about the business side of it won't be as long as these two are. But I think the total amount of time for looking at the preview of this program shouldn't be any more than about an hour. So maybe an hour and 15 minutes. But that's all I got. I appreciate you.